He was the best. Yeah. Honestly, he was such a happy kid from like birth on, and we loved being parents. Yeah. Like he had the best laugh. Oh my yes, gosh! He did. Daycare would always send us like videos and pictures of him just like. Yeah, I remember hearing his laughter up. the first few times, and you just can't believe that's your actual kid showing joy. So yeah. yeah, that's yeah, that's how I remember that he kept getting these ear infections mm -hmm. and the doctor also would say like i see like this little speck back there but it could be nothing i remember getting a call from daycare where they were like something's not right yeah like, he's just i remember that day he's so lethargic and our happy bryce is just fussy whenever we mm -hmm. aren't holding him and Basically, we we had an MRI, I think a scan done, because we're kind of like, what's happening here? We don't really know what else to do. And we had the scan, and then all of a sudden this doctor comes in and he says to us, uh, we have the potential here for a catastrophic event. And he looked scared. He too. looked terrified. Um, he looked like this is bad news. And I'm like, the uh, temperature changed, our lives changed in that moment. We're like, how bad could it be? How bad could it be to be scared? And he's like, we got to operate now. It just all changed. Mm -hmm. Life changed. Next morning is when Dr. Cabrier came in, and with the scans, I'm an x-ray tech, so I know how to read them, and as soon as they came up, I just started crying, and I was like, that is huge. Like, that is a huge tumor. They scheduled a surgery within a couple days of that to remove the tumor. Dr. Mendel came back with the little yellow post-it note. I remember that color of it, too. And it just said, embryonal tumor with multi-layered rosettes. And that was it. And she's like, I'm sorry, we don't, we don't have a treatment plan for this. It's extremely rare. And they determined that the best course would be to try to remove the tumor surgically first, then do a high-dose chemo. And with the high-dose chemo, it would be higher levels that a normal person could recover from. So we did two rounds of pretty intense chemo with Chemo him. was bad, but what else? you had literally That's had- the only hope we had. You had no other options, so you had to. Brain tumors in children are the number one cause of cancer-related death. The main treatments for brain tumors today are still surgery, chemotherapy, and radiation. We'd like to be able to you know, replace these therapies with less toxic and more effective things. Brain tumors in childhood are extraordinarily rare. For this family, rare is meaningless. 100% of that child is affected. 100% of that family is affected. It isn't rare in their world. And you need to know how to use science to find the right answer. You're quickly learning that you do not have the tools necessary to beat it. And so you wrestle with that, trying to argue with yourself that you somehow are because um, how else are you supposed to go forward? The tumor had grown again. I remember we had a, a meeting with Dr. Cabrier then, okay, so he's gonna go in for another surgery. This would be his fourth brain surgery. Yep. And when he came in, Dr. Bendel came in, and one of the nursing staff all came in at the three, same time, we knew it was bad. Yeah, it was brutal. When we asked how long we had, left with him during that meeting. Yeah, three months. She said, I don't know. Maybe three It months. could be a week. It could be three months. We don't know. It was during that week of that last round of one week of chemo where we called him. We're like, we had home health care, hospice care, and we're like, we're not going to keep doing this. We weren't ready for it at all. But, you know, I look back at pictures and Bryce, Bryce was ready to be done. We weren't but you can see with each surgery, we lost a little of Bryce. You did. And so we weren't at all ready for him to be done fighting, but he was.
We know that if a child has a brain tumor, their chances of dying from that cancer are far greater than if they have a new diagnosis of leukemia or a new sarcoma. So we have so much to learn. Um, this is really one of our last big frontiers. And so investing in uh, brain tumor research today uh, is going to bear a huge dividend in the future. More ideas than ever before are out there for us to try. It's great that there are more ideas than ever before, but it means we have a lot of work to do to sort through the things that might, might work best. And CCRF has been critical in funding that kind of discovery research. It would have meant the world to have a packet to say, this is what we do for this treatment, this is what we find is most successful. I want Children's Hospital to call me 10 years from now because a kid has that cancer. And then for me to say, well, at least you have A, B, C. We didn't have A, B, C. That's progress. And it's going to take donors. It's going to take people giving money to something that they maybe haven't thought about until today. The cool thing about our partnership with CCRF here at the University of Minnesota is that it's there at the beginning and we go to them and say hey we've got this great idea we really want to develop it and CCRF provides seed funds for projects that help us to develop the idea. There is purpose behind Bryce's passing and I'm very passionate about that because without it it's meaningless and it's just pain mm -hmm. but with our faith and with people like at the gala wanting to help there is purpose we just need a chance. I remember like, you know, you'd see commercials and everyone can get behind children's cancer, uh, fighting it, but you see it and you move on with your life. It's really easy to do that and ask that this be the time you don't forget. We need your help. And the families that go before us that don't know they're walking into this cancer need that help. And they're gonna be so happy you did. Mm -hmm. Children's Cancer Research Fund allows us to take more shots at finding out what might work for childhood cancer. I am convinced that we are close to seeing children being cured who wouldn't have been cured in the past. We're starting to see huge advances. We're right at the beginning of one of those incremental steps in medicine where everything's going to change. This could be the day that we say goodbye to chemotherapy and radiation forever. This will be the day that we start fighting, straight up. In order to fight, we need help. But this will be the day that we actually start getting real. This could be the day that somebody can tell a family, your child doesn't have to die of this disease. I expect that day will come. I'm 100% confident that it will come. It's out there. We just have to find it. <laughs>